Well, good afternoon. My name is Ryan R. Fox, and I work with the BitShares platform, and I wanted to talk with you a little bit about decentralized leadership. So I'll talk to you about that uh, on a couple of different topics here. First, uh, I wanted to talk about my involvement working for a decentralized autonomous company, and then secondly, my involvement as a leader of a decentralized development team. So I'll talk about these in the context of BitShares, and briefly what the BitShares project is, is a decentralized financial services platform that is implemented as a public blockchain. So a little bit about my background. Uh, I started out as an entrepreneur a couple decades ago in my dorm room, started a financial services company, ran that for about five years, made an exit, and then uh, started a career as a technical uh, consultant. I uh, worked primarily in the financial services space, a little bit of time in academia, and then most recently with a hedge fund. Uh, so I wanted to talk to you uh, a, a little bit about, um, oh, I, I should also tell you then what, what, it, what it is that I do today, of course. So uh, today I'm a, prof I'm a professional scrum master. Uh, I guess if I was working in any other organizational structure, you would probably call my role a product owner, but working for a decentralized autonomous company, owner is really not the right uh, term to be using. Uh, so let me, uh, let me talk a little bit about what that term uh, decentralized autonomous company means. And from here I'll call that a DAC, so we'll abbreviate, the, uh, we'll abbreviate that to a DAC. So um, what, 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 the, what the BitShares DAC is, is probably, frankly, the craziest organizational structure I have ever worked in. And it's also the one that I enjoy working in the most. Um, it has nothing really to do with what I was used to in big corporate, uh, where I found that I would always have teams that were uh, organized with a hierarchy, right? Uh, and there was always a leader who had the budget and had the idea and the vision and, and, and worked the way down to get your implementation for your project. That was what I was used to. When I came to the BitShares project uh, earlier this year to, uh, to, to take on the role as a development coordinator, I had to really understand what it meant to work within this type of decentralized organization. So let me explain what that looks like to you from, from an organizational standpoint. Really there's three different components that comprise our DAC. There is uh, the token holders down here. Uh, they are our governance layer. Then we have our workers and they are our employees. And then we have the concept of a, uh, of a committee and they are probably the most similar to the corporate structure as a board of directors. All right, so if we take a look at token holders, those are our community. Those are the governance layer of our blockchain, of, of, of our protocol. What we have implemented inside of the BitShares protocol is a, a voting mechanism. This allows token holders to have a voice in and define how this BitShares project is going to go forward. So tokens are distributed out to uh, token holders, and they use them to vote for the other two components of our uh, implementation. First one would be uh, the, the committee. Like I said, it's much like a, uh, like a board of directors. They are uh, members of our community that are elected to uh, help us define the direction of the company, help us uh, define parameters and configure parameters within the protocol. One of those would be how much are the fees going to be for, 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 for our various operations. Uh, and and um, after the committee, the, the, we also have the concept of workers. Workers are also elected by the token holders, but these, uh, the workers are compensated whereas the committee members are not compensated. So there are two different types of workers. Uh, the first worker you would be most familiar with as a miner, or block producers, we call them. All right, so these, uh, the, the block producers are compensated one BTS token for every uh, successful block that they create and append to the blockchain. The other type of worker is called a proposal. And this is a much more abstract construct for uh, allowing community members to add value to the DAC and receive compensation from so for their contributions. So there is a smart contract implemented in the protocol for a proposal. 
and an individual can define what it is they want to do, anything that they would like to do, and define uh, who, who would be compensated, how long they're going to do the work for, and how much they expect to be compensated uh, for in the BTS tokens. So then uh, they would uh, publish this to the blockchain, and they would also publish a, a, a written a description of what uh, it is that they're going to do, and the community would evaluate. Is this work actually something that is valuable to the DAC? Is this going to improve the way that the, uh, that the, that the, that the BitShares DAC would uh, uh, perform? And if yes, they would uh, use their votes in order to uh, vote this proposal upward, and if it meets the threshold, then the tokens would be emitted from the blockchain and compensate the, uh, uh, the individual worker for that. All right, so let's quickly review here. So what we have for a DAC from an organizational standpoint is really uh, a governance layer, our token holders, we have employees, those are our workers, and then we have, um, we have the concept of a board of directors as our um, committee. So let's now talk about uh, the leadership structure of this organization. Uh, and I think in order to talk about leadership, we probably have to take a look uh, at it over time because what we have today as a leadership structure within the BitShares organization is substantially different than what it was in 2013 when this project originated. And in 2013, really what the original um, development team wanted to accomplish was uh, twofold. They wanted to create a decentralized exchange so that we wouldn't run into a Mt. Gox situation. And they also wanted to get away from uh, the volatility in cryptocurrencies by establishing a stable coin. So those were the things that they wanted to do. In 2013, we didn't really have the concept of an ICO. So that's not the way that they raised their money. They took uh, the state of the art of the day, which was either to follow on um, to go to the BitShares Talk forum and announce when you were going to do your, your, your mining for your token, uh, or, or what uh, MasterCoin did where you would donate to a particular Exodus address. So the original team took those two models uh, uh, together and then created a token generation event, uh, and over the course of 100 days, they produced their code and got it ready to then create a Genesis block. So all of the contributors during the token generation event were then uh, locked into what was going to become the BitShares um, blockchain in the summer of 2014. Now, the original team that developed this was actually a private company. And when they were done with the code, they said, we'll release it to the community for anybody to uh, launch this in, as, as a new blockchain, but you have to use this genesis that we used over here. And if you do, you get an MIT license for it. So today, our project is open source, and you can uh, check it out on GitHub slash BitShares. All right, so now we have the blockchain that was uh, launched in 2016. And the team uh, th that developed it stuck around for a couple more years until uh, early 2016. And what was happening at the time was there wasn't uh, enough support from the community to fund them to continue on the development. And they uh, departed to go start another project. And we are happy to take a look at what they continue to do in developing our uh, DPoS um, um, a, a protocol here, which is the delegated proof of stake. <laughs> and um, that's now used in, in, in many other projects. About 30 other projects are now using our DPoS uh, algorithm. BitShares was the first one to use it. All right, um, in 2016, what we saw then was a time when the leadership uh, was, was really whoever wanted to step up and become a, a developer, just individuals. So they would stand up and say, OK, um, I want to do this little bit of work right here, and they would put up a worker proposal. And sometimes those would be um, uh, accepted, and those would be funded. Uh, into 2017, we found that uh, teams were now uh, getting ready to be uh, established, where we got away from just individuals coming in and people wanting to come and work together as a team. So my peer, Bill Butler, he runs uh, the user interface team. And he is a project manager as well. And he came to the BitShares community and said, hey, I want to lend my experience as a project manager to all those who are helping develop the, the user interface. So he created that. And now that, that, that team is funded that way. I used that same model then earlier this year when I wanted to uh, organize uh, a team of developers to work on the protocol level. So that's what I'm doing today. 
Um, and and my, my team is called the core development team. The other way that we are um, helping uh, establish leadership within the, uh, within the BitShares DEX is to uh, establish a foundation. This happened in, in 2017 and it became apparent that uh, the, the, the regulators were taking a look at blockchain technology and that we needed a foundation in order to have a legal presence to go out and, and talk to the real world, if you will. Because up until this time, uh, the BitShares DAC did not have anything that would resemble a corporate identity. There was no physical address. There was no uh, HR. There, there wasn't a leader. There wasn't anybody with the answer, right? So we, uh, for, within the community, created a proposal that said we would like to have an individual uh, represent us. So my colleague Anamika Dirks is here uh, as well and she was elected to be the spokesperson for our DAC. Um, this, uh, the, the, the block, she, she also then uh, works with the Blockchain Foundation as well and this organization is uh, something that has, has really helped us uh, get out there and, and, and advance what it is that we want to do. They help our community as well when uh, other individuals want to create a worker proposal. Uh, Many times we see that the BitShares Blockchain Foundation becomes the escrow agent to receive those tokens then from, uh, from the blockchain and hold them uh, in escrow so that they can then be uh, given out to the developers uh, at such time that they meet the, um, the milestones that they had set out in their proposal. The other way that we're attracting and retaining developers uh, is, to, is, is to find white hat, white hat hackers who want to come hack the decks.io and you can go there and you can find out if uh, you find anything that that we are not doing right in our protocol uh, in our code you can go there and uh, apply for a bug bounty if you just if you properly disclose that that issue to us the way that my team is organized in the in the in the core core team is that we use github to do everything that is our main uh, collaboration environment so I'm there to curate the uh, backlog of all of our issues. Our community will tell us the various things that they want to have developed. And then uh, we'll curate those into, into issues and then put them into releases. And we, and we make releases uh, uh, periodically throughout the year. Uh, the other way that we uh, see, see leadership for the development, uh, future development of our protocol is uh, by improvement proposals. And what we'll do there is we'll have individuals who, will, uh, who, who are, are on my team or come from the community uh, to do business analyst work, to draft specification documents who then uh, will uh, put those to the community and ask them to vote for them. So again, using what, with the tools that we have within uh, the consensus process to, to vote for and approve whether or not we want these specifications to be implemented and then included within our uh, protocol. Uh, going forward, uh, I'm, I'm really uh, happy to be here and have this exposure to all of the academics in the area because we have a blockchain that is uh, fully functional since uh, 2014 and we're, we are looking to get out there and, and have others adopt it and, and learn about how it can work uh, within their institution and uh, get, get new developers. So uh, I hope that we've had the opportunity to explain a little bit about how decentralized leadership works within BitShares. Thank you. Um, thank you very much for the presentation. Uh, is there any particular reason that the industry is, uh, uh, has uh, a structure of non-profit, uh, like uh, uh, Bitcoin Foundation, Ethereum Foundation, can say bitshares.org, is there any particular reason that one needs to uh, structure that when you're coming up with your own uh, token? Thank you. Well, uh, the, the, the foundation uh, within bitshares was actually not there at the inception, whereas I think most of the other projects that we see, uh, we have the foundation kind of established up front, and, and, and oftentimes the foundation is there to, to be the to be the recipient of some of the initial uh, token offering, and then they would be the, the, the ongoing developer of it, or would, would fund future development. That's not the way that it worked in, in BitShares. When we did that initial token uh, event, 
uh, all of the distribution of the tokens went only to those who participated in that. There was not a foundation that was established at the time, so there wasn't any development dollars available for, um, uh, for the development team to be funded from. Uh, so now, really, what we're looking at in, in the BitShares Foundation is to have, uh, you know, again, this, the, the, this legal entity because we, the, the DAC itself does not have a, a physical address. Uh, it's just the software uh, implemented as a, as a consensus protocol.